challenge our, our colleagues in local government, on the city council, and on the county commission, uh, together with our law enforcement officials in Macon and Bibb County, to look at what we can do locally to aid law enforcement and to aid uh, our, our prosecutorial officials so that they can go out and do the job that I believe the citizens of Macon uh, and Bibb County want them to do. You know, I've talked to the Secretary of State's office and those who've looked at this issue for a long time, and I've asked them a, a very difficult question, or at least the answer they gave me made it very difficult for me. Is there any other area of the state where this problem is as bad as it is in Macon and Bibb County? And their answer to me is no. I think we have to ask ourselves a question. Why is that the case? And all, for all of those constituents who send us emails and write letters and make phone calls saying we're disturbed that this has become a part of the image of our community, I want to challenge them as well to make sure their local, local city councilmen and county commissioners and law enforcement officials understand that we take this seriously and we want to change this and we want to do something about this in our community because that's not the image we want for Macon, Bibb County, or Middle Georgia. And obviously, when you look at what other entities, uh, other locations like Gwinnett County, you can see that there have been some areas of the state where they have successfully enacted local ordinances that have made this a much easier thing to eradicate. So uh, in a nutshell, that's the bill, and that's my challenge, and that's what we're going to continue to work on, and I appreciate uh, the support of the local delegation in the Senate. This bill was signed by Senator Brown, so it has uh, the signatures of both senators from Macon and Bibb County. And uh, it will go through the process in the Senate, and when we send it over to the House, hopefully uh, within a, a week or two, uh, it's, I, I appreciate the support of my colleagues, and particularly those standing here with me today, uh, Representative Peake and Representative Sellier, and I know others in the delegation who will be there to help us uh, shepherd this bill through the processes in the House so that we can have more, more um, severe punishments in the law and I hope that that will be helpful and then also we'll help the local governments to know that they can in fact enact ordinances uh, that the local, local government can use to, uh, to, to deal with this, this issue, this scourge I would say on our community. With that, my colleagues, would you like to say anything? Uh, no, other than I'm Proud to, and appreciate your leadership in uh, taking this issue on, and we look forward to supporting it in the House if the uh, Senate sees to send it our way. Thank you. Now, I, I say the same thing. We need to uh, project an image of a wholesome community to attract development and, and people moving to our community, and this will go a long way to do that. Thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yes. yes. Can you describe the problem in Macon, what, what that prompted this legislation? Well, uh, we, we seem to have a proliferation in recent years of these spas or massage parlors uh, in our community, uh, even to the point that we see signs for them up and down the, the interstate as you're approaching um, uh, uh, middle Georgia, and particularly Macon and Bibb County. Uh, again, I think, frankly, the, the reason for it is that our ordinances are not uh, very strict. So perhaps it's an easy environment for them to come into and get a business license. Beyond that, it probably has to do with location because we are at the crossroads of the state and uh, two interstates, and uh, that probably plays a role in it as well. Do you think human trafficking is going on at these places? We've had a case recently, um, and I'm not familiar with all the details, but I do think uh, it is often thought that this uh, kind of thing is, is behind the scenes. I know I've heard from law enforcement that occasionally they feel like when one of these places they do a sting and it is closed down, they simply pick up shop and, and move uh, the women to another location that may be owned by the same entity or individual. So uh, I'm afraid that, th that, that is, uh, there is a dark side to this that, that very much could relate to this. And you mentioned that you may be concerned about a reputation uh, popping up. I mean, are you hearing that, that people, you know, maybe in other parts of the state or, or, or maybe the region are, are associating, um, you know, this, this business with, with your part of the state? 
I, I don't want to go so far as to say that I've heard from other areas of the state or even uh, businesses or that this has been a deterrent to economic development. I'm not suggesting that, but I'm saying for the good people of Middle Georgia and uh, my district and these gentlemen's district, they're, they're, it is disturbing when you're going up and down the interstate uh, to see advertisement for, advertisements for these locations, to read the occasional stories about sting operations or sex trafficking that may be going on behind the scenes. So, you know, it, it is of concern, I think, to local citizens. Mm -hmm.